Back on the record, it's 11.30. Um, anyone that was here this morning for the 9 o'clock agenda, and I swore you in, you're still under oath. But anybody who um, was not placed under oath uh, this morning, and if you're going to be speaking to me about any of the uh, remaining items on our agenda, I do need to swear you in. Uh, I can swear everyone in together who uh, will be speaking uh, on a matter. So if you'll stand and raise your right hand, if uh, you, uh, and I will... Uh, Swear you all in together. Thank you. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you very much. You can all have a seat. Uh, please silence any cell phones. When your case is called, please come up to the podium to my right. Um, I will first get some background information on the, um, the request for the lien reduction from the city, and uh, the city uh, may make a recommendation on um, how, to, how they would like me to proceed after I've heard from the city. It'll then be your opportunity to uh, tell me about the request. And uh, once I've heard everything from both sides, I will uh, in all likelihood enter a, an uh, order today on the matter. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. First case number 10, 931 44th Street, CE2002050, number 10, 931 44th Street. Michael Williams, uh, Code Enforcement, City of West Palm Beach, case ending in 02509314th Street. Uh, date ordered 31820. Uh, fine started 51820. Uh, total of num number of days of uh, out of compliance 217. Uh, daily fine of $100 per day. Uh, current fine uh, 21700. Uh, date of compliance 1221. 20. Uh, Special Magistrate, this is the uh, same owner. Um, two cases under this particular owner. Only uh, mitigating factor, uh, COVID delays, cities requesting 20%. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Tell me your name and address, and then you can tell me about the request. Sure. My name is Elizabeth Jimenez, 931 44th Street, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33407. Yes, ma'am. So um, we received, we had a tenant in this house. We opted not to renew the lease. Um, obviously, per some of the findings here, they were parking on the grass, and, you know, we continuously told them not to do so. Um, but it was hard to get them to listen. Um, we, on the driveway, we took care of that ourselves and contacted Natalie, which was a deputy. And um, obviously the tenants were parking multiple cars and they, um, the driveway was, we had to continuously fix the driveway ourselves. On the grass uh, issue, we planted seeds, Natalie told us it was going to take too long, so we, during COVID, we tried to get multiple vendors to come over and give us quotes. Uh, same with the driveway, we tried to do it ourselves. We contacted the city of West Palm Beach to give us a um, landlord permit. Um, during that process, we um, were told at the time that we were here to pick up the permit, we were told that we couldn't do it ourselves because we don't live in the house. So then that delayed the process to get the um, the driveway repaired. So that took even longer to get all these things fixed. However, we, there was another issue with the, um, the driver, the driveway in the past that was always taken care of in a timely fashion. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why we want this lien reduced to, you know, zero, uh, because we try to take care of this. As obviously there were a lot of factors due to the pandemic that we couldn't take care of it, of it right away. All right, thank you, ma'am. Um, sure. Anything else from the city? No, um, the, the city certainly does understands that, you know, there were some delays, but um, 
217 days, uh, the property was out, out of compliance. Um, and so the city um, is uh, still requesting 20%. Can I say something else? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. So when we contacted um, the city to advise that the driveway was done by ourselves, you know, patched up, um, we were not told that the clock was going to continue to tick. So, um, you know, we were not aware of that. Okay. We were told that everything had to be done at the same time after the fact. Right. So we had no idea that the clock was still ticking because the grass wasn't done. Gotcha. Even though the driveway was done. Okay. All right. Mr. Williams, you said there's no significant history of violations with this property? Um, under this particular owner, there's been uh, only two cases. Okay. What was this case and one other? Um, do you have a history of those? Yes. Do you know what the other case was about? No. You, no, sir. Don't. We can look it up if, if if you need that, that's okay. I, I think one was the driveway, which we did, and then the tenant parking on the grass, leaving you know a tire outside, which we continuously told them not to do so. But again, it's hard to get them to understand that. All right. No, I don't need you to look it up. That's fine. This uh, in this case, we have a um, 2020 case the total lien uh, is twenty one thousand seven hundred dollars <throat> excuse me um, city's recommendation is it be reduced to no less than four thousand three hundred and forty dollars um, based on what I've heard from the respondent and the city um, I'm going to agree to reduce this uh, down to $2,000. How long would it take you to pay that, ma'am? I can give you any reasonable amount of time. Um, I mean, I still don't agree with such a high fee, um, but um, I don't know. Six Very months? Yeah. Six months. Okay, thank you both. Number five, four ten twenty six Street, CE one nine zero one zero three three eight. Number five, four ten twenty six Street. Hold off on that one. We're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna have to pull it. If they can get here before we're done, would that be okay? Um, say that again. Okay, we don't have a designated agent here. Okay. Um, so we'll call you as soon as we find all the conditions. Yeah, if they can get here before we're, we're done, we can hear it today. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. A okay, number four eight hundred thirty six Street C E one five zero eight zero one seven zero. Number four eight hundred thirty six Street. Whenever you're ready. Mitch Posner, Code Enforcement, case ending in 170836th Street, date order 107 of 15. Fine started 127 of 15, ran for 1,715 days. Uh, total is $171,500. There was a previous payment of 10,000, so the balance due is $161,500. Okay. Uh, it was $100 a day, date of compliance was 817 of 20. Uh, the applicant's a previous owner, but is the owner that caused the violation. The, there were 18 cases in the case history under their ownership, uh, and the mitigating factor is the new owner was supposed to take care of it, but that's a 
a silver matter and has no bearing on, on the city's decision in these matters. The new owner did have a conditional lien release but did not meet the conditions. That's where the uh, $10,000 payment had come from. Okay. Um, so it reverted back to the full amount minus the 10000 What happened with the, why did it fall apart? Why did it not? Uh... Um, okay, what I've, the email I've got here from Laura Borso, who managed the uh, conditional. All renovations were to have been completed by September 1st of 2018. Permits were not even applied for until January 18th of 2019, okay. let alone the work finished. That's when they first applied. And the ten thousand dollar payment is that what the the reduction was all the way? It, down? It, it's a conditional release. It doesn't go through the okay. through the magistrate like these does. Um, uh, basically, if a new owner comes in, they arrange with legal. The commissioner sign off on a conditional lien release. You have to do A, B, C, D, E, F uh, with a deadline for all these steps. And if you don't meet those deadlines, um, it reverts back to the full amount. Understood. But anything paid doesn't get refunded. Okay, I got it. All right, does the city have a recommendation on this? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. uh, I mean, with the history and, and owner cause, normally it'd be 50% given the size the city's asking for 20%. 20, you said? 20%, yes, sir. Okay, thanks. All right. Yes, ma'am. Well, um, let me get your name and address, and then oh. you can tell me about the <laughs> Delena Thomas, um, 836th Street. Um, this was my mother's property. Um, she had got sick. This is when we're from New York, so I came down to like rectify everything what was going on. So when everything was going on, I didn't know until after you know I was trying to sell the properties. And um, this all came about, and so we did the conditional release. Anything he was saying was definitely correct. We did the conditional release. They did not you know, follow up on their end, which reverted back to us, and the house that we're living now, the lien is attaching. And my, I really just wanted to get detached you know, from our home that we live in. So um, I spoke with a code uh, agent here, she basically said, um, the house that we live in, just comply. You know, they're going to send an ins inspector by and make sure everything is in compliance. We're in compliance with our property. Um, and just do a lien reduction again, over. Uh, and that's why I'm here. Is the house occupied at this time? Um, that house? Yeah. I believe so. Um, like I said, we're not the owner anymore. Um, That's and right. They're been, That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay. they're been they have been complying with uh, the guidelines now. Yeah, so, no, that's right. I remember Mr. Post. You know, well, now, now. Um, so I would like it to be reduced to zero if it's possible just because of the, their situation really, it's not really ours. It really mess, messed up with, you know. There was, they were the problem, not really us, really. Excuse me, Magistrate, I may have missed it, but what was the date of, the, of when this prior owner mm -hmm. transferred title to the next owner? Uh, July 15th of, of 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So the property appraiser's printout shows a uh, August 2018 quit claim deed. Okay. To... Uh, the current owner. Mr. Posner, you had told me there were 18 previous cases. What uh, there were 18 span? cases under their ownership. Um, and what, over what period of time? Monique, can you about? bring up the main screen? She'll bring up the main screen. That'll give me a brief case description.
not just just the main screen. Um, work without permits. Nope, just just that. Leave that. <laughs> work without permits. Overgrowth. Unpaved parking. Unpaved parking. No rental license. Uh, it was briefly a chronic nuisance case. Uh, paint needed. Overgrowth. I, I think you have it on your screen, sir. So then these go back to 20, are all between 2018 and current? Uh, looks like December of 28. Okay, so the, the very top case would have been the new owner. Everything under that would have been their ownership. Let me see. When oh, I see. They go all the way it. back to... Oh, yeah, uh, everything under that would be their, under, their ownership. So it looks like they go back to 02. Uh, yes, sir. Their ownership actually predates our records in this management okay. system. Gotcha. All right. Anything else you'd like to tell me, ma'am? No. Um, I'm just, I just want to just detach this lien from our previous home that we live, honestly. So. All right. Um, so in this case, we have a uh, lien of a hundred. It's one hundred sixty-one thousand five hundred right now. That's the it. balance, yes, sir. All right. And the city is recommending it be reduced to no less than twenty percent, which is just over thirty-two thousand uh, dollars, based on the evidence that I've heard and the circumstances. And there are definitely factors on both sides in this case, um, but I will agree uh, to reduce this to $10,000, and I can give you up to a year to pay that, 12 months. So even the, sorry, even the $10,000 that was paid couldn't be applied? I'm taking that into consideration already, so. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Ma'am, here's a copy of your order. Next case, number 6, 619 45th Street, CE 19110232, number 6, 619 45th Street. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Uh, property ending in 0232619 45th Street. Uh, date ordered uh, January 5th, 2020. Fine started February 15th, 2020. Um, total number of days uh, out of compliance, 236 days. Current fine, $236,000. Uh, daily fine of $100 per day. Uh, compliance date of 10 8 20 um, approximately uh, five cases under this particular owner. Um, same owner uh, that caused the violations. Um, mitigating factor, um, um, the respondent indicated uh, in compliance as the, as the mitigating factor. Uh, City is requesting 30%. 30? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Current fine, uh, 23600 I stand corrected. Can you tell me, um, it looks like one of the violations on this case was uh, a building, building permit related. What was the um, work that was done without a permit? Um, 
Special Magistrate pavers were uh, installed without a permit. Pavers? Pavers, nice. yes. Like driveway kind of thing? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, yes, sir, if you can tell me your name and address, then you can tell me about the request. My name is Leon Trammell. I live at uh, 6632 Wild Orchid Trail. The house is rental property. There's two houses there, one in the front and one in the back but one driveway. So we have a problem with the people parking in the back, can't get out. So they were parking on the grass. So we were on the impression that we could put pavers on 60% or 40% of the, that frontage, and that would allow them to not park on the grass. So we hired a guy for $4,000 to lay the pavers. Uh, the inspector came by while he was laying the pavers and told him that that was, un, was not in compliance, but the guy was from, spoke Spanish and he didn't understand a word the guy was, the inspector was saying. So then we started trying to get a permit to resolve the issue and then we discovered that no, we had to have 75% of the ground be grass. So we moved, removed 8% or 8 feet of the tile to give them 75%. And all we were trying to do was to keep the tenants from parking on the grass. And then when we had the COVID and everything come in, we couldn't get permits and Ken, well, Ken Best was managing the property up until a couple of years ago. So Ken will tell you all the problems he had getting the, the permit. Ken, would you please? Sure. How you doing, sir? I'm Ken. Um, yes, yeah. sir. Um, I'm the real estate agent and the property manager for the property. At, in, um, the property's been sold already back in December. Um, you know, Mr. Trammell's getting a little older, so we're selling a lot of his properties. But in the meantime, you know, we had to, we had to hire um, a contractor we had to get a survey done. We had to get an engineering thing for setbacks and everything for the property. And obviously, with everybody knows, with COVID, it just took us, you know, three or four or five months to get that taken care of. Um, so we work with Susan Palmer. I work with her, you know, a lot. I was born and raised here in West Palm. So I know the ins and outs of all this. So he's just, Mr. Chairman was just trying to beautify the place. He, he up, you know, he does his properties very nice all over the, all over the city. Um, so he's just asking for, you know, for obviously a, a, a break for this whole thing. He's just trying to beautify the property and make it nicer. So that's kind of where we're at on that one. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, anything else from the city? No, sir. All right. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, so in this case, we have a $23,600 lien. Um, the city's recommendation is it be reduced to no more than 30%, which would be just over $7,000. Um, I into might add the $4,000 is what we put in the driveway thinking that it was going to be better. All right, thank you for that. I got that. Um, All right, so the city's recommendation was just a little over 7,000. Um, um, taking into consideration what I've heard from the respondent and from the city, uh, I will agree in this case to reduce the lien, excuse me, to $4,500. Um, can you pay that in 60 days? I'll pay it today if you take it 3,000. Uh, I'll give you the 60 days. Thank you very much. Is it order? Next case is number two, three, and nine for the address of 4000 Windsor Avenue, CE 1404022, CE 07080584, and CE 18070281. This is number nine. Two, three, and nine. Two, three, and nine. Going in chronological order, oldest case first, case number 2, 3, and 9. Case number 2, 3, and 9. 
Case ending in 584-4003, Windsor, date ordered 10-1907, fine started 11-1907, ran for 3,936 days, total $787,200, $200 a day, date of compliance 8-29 of 18. Uh, it is a new owner, based due to the size of it, instead of 25%, the city is asking for 2% on that one. Case ending in 122-4003, Windsor. Date ordered 521 of 14, fine started 621 of 14, ran for 1,408 days. Total is 140,800, ran at $100 a day, date of compliance 429-18. Uh, new owner, again based on the size, city's asking for 5% on that one. Uh, the third one is case ending in 281, 4003, Windsor. Date ordered 9-5 of 18, fine started 10-5 of 18, ran for 68 days, uh, total of $6,800, $100 a day, date of compliance 12-12 of 18, uh, also a new owner, said he's asking for 25% on that. Um, the, the only mitigating factors we were given was that they are a new owner and that they worked to bring it into compliance, but all of these were complied prior to their ownership. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, go ahead and tell me your name and address, then you can tell me about the request. Yes, hi, good afternoon. My name is Ina Tsapko. I'm a designated agent for the Lane Rani LLC. We have purchased this property on February 28th of 2020. Uh, we did purchase it with existing liens, uh, and we've been in constant communication with the city code compliance with Natalie Clark. Uh, we went over the list of everything that needs to be done in order to bring this property into compliance. At the time of the purchase of the property, the property was occupied with tenants and pandemia started. We could not do inspections, interior inspections for quite of some time. So I believe the accumulation cost was keep building up for us. So we applied for rental, we applied for everything that needed to be applied right away, but because of the pandemia and because of the cities were closed and interior inspections were not allowed, we kind of had to wait quite some time. Uh, we did meet at the property with Natalie a few times. We went over everything what needed to be done. We put, we spent over $20,000 in repairs to bring this property to the look as it looks as, a, as of today right now. Did you say 20000 About $20,000, yes, because it was quite a big list. If you look at this list of violations, the property was quite a distressed with the tenants occupying the property, with tenants, you know, neglecting to look after the property. We had to take all this responsibility. Is it occupied now? It's not occupied. We are, um, the last time we had our uh, meeting with Natalie, we went inside, it's vacant right now, so she closed out interior violations and exterior violations, and it's vacant as of today. Okay. And with the fact that we bought this property without uh, I mean, I'm sorry, with existing violations, but we did everything possible to bring this property into. Now, even, even code compliance officer stated that she is amazed with the look. She said that we did a good job. And we are respectively asking to cover the city costs 
because even the 2% that the city is offering for us to pay on $787,000 is quite a lot of money, more than we can afford. Okay, and you took, a percent, you took ownership in February, about a year, just over a year ago? Exactly a year ago, yes, right before the pandemic started, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. Uh, is there anything else from the city? Yes, sir. I, I believe the, the compliance efforts they're talking about was to qualify for the lien reduction hearing, not case compliance. So I, I've got that now, but if I can ask a question, um, what was the $20,000 in improvements that was done? Uh, basically, we had to clear out the whole, ex uh, it was a lot of trash, it was a lot of debris. When the property vacated the property, they kind of violate, uh, vandalized it. There were like walls with holes, there were a lot of painting on the walls that we had to repaint the whole entire house. We had to repaint the whole exterior house. We had to hire a company to do the pavement in front of the house, like all these things. We had to take care of every single crack and all these things. So um, overall. Okay, so you're talking uh, cosmetic improvements, nothing was structurally changed? No, 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 okay. cosmetic improvements, but with the, unfortunately okay. I don't have the pictures to show you how the tenants love the property. It was very, very distressed. I understand. Nothing further, sir. Okay. Anything else, uh, ma'am? I'm just hoping for, <laughs> for your word. All right, in this case, we have three different uh, code cases, um, two with significant liens, uh, 787,200 and 140,800, and then the third has a bit of a lesser, a much lesser lien at $6,800. Um, all new owners who've brought the property into compliance. Um, There's almost a million dollars worth of liens on this property right now. Um, the city's recommendation would be to reduce it to no more than roughly $25,000, a little less than that, 24 and change. Um, given the circumstances that I've heard today and the evidence and the criteria that, that I'm required to apply, uh, I'm going to, we'll do it this way, and I have to break this down into the three cases. So, agenda item number nine, which is the case ending in uh, 281, that lien is $6,800. Uh, I'm going to reduce that one to $200. The case ending in 122, that's agenda item number two. Uh, that lien is $140,800. I'll reduce that to $1,800. And then agenda item number three, that's the lien that's $787,200. I'll reduce that 
uh, to $4,000 for the total of $6,000. And I can give you, again, up to a year to pay that. How much time do you need? We'll, we'll pay it with uh, 60 we'll days. Take the 12 months on that. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Cases number one, seven, and eight for 515 Lilac Court, 98266P, CE0403005, and CE0408927, numbers one, seven, and eight. Chronological order, oldest one first, uh, case 98-266P, 515 Lilac, date order 916-98, fine starter 10 1,850 days, total is 277500 $150, date of compliance 11 at 10 of 2003. Um, magistrate, uh, this is the largest of the three, but the city is, is already moving to release this one outright. Okay. Not enforcing that one, which leaves us with the other two. Uh, case ending in 045, 515 Lilac. Date ordered 47 of 04, fine started 32 of 04. Ran for 94 days, total 9,400. Daily fine $100 a day, date of compliance 64 of 04. New owner. City's asking for 25%. Case ending in 927, 515 Lilac. Date order 102004, fine started 83004. 42 days, total 4200. $100 a day, date of compliance 101104, also 25%. Um, the only mitigation on the application is that the liens, they're new owners, and, and the liens were just too high. Uh, but we've already wiped out the $277,000 one. City's asking for 25% on the other two. So do you need an order from me on the on the the 98 case or are you just going to release that on your own? Um, no, we do that internally okay. through our ordinance. Um, we have an ordinance that does that internally, excuse me, with our finance department. So we don't have to worry about no, my sir. involvement with that? No. Okay. And this is a empty lot still. Excuse me, sir. This is still an empty lot. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Let me uh, hear from the uh, applicant. Go ahead and tell me your name and address, sir, and then you can tell me about the case. How's it going, uh, Nicholas Haney, um, property owner of five fifteen, and, and the other two lilacs. Um, yeah. So we we purchased these properties with our intentions to build uh, affordable single family homes. Um, we, in turn, partnered with the CRA to, to complete a couple affordable homes uh, to help the mayor achieve his 500-unit uh, goal. And currently, we, we've built three out of the seven homes that we, we are uh, planning to build there. And in order, we owned a portion of one lot and the CRA owned a portion of the other lot. And in order for us to get our obligations done with the city and our partnership done and the house is sold, um, we need to get the liens reduced completely so that we can get the lots split and completed. All right, thank you. Um, question, uh, Mr. Posner, both uh, agenda item seven and eight, and that's the, I guess those are the 04 cases. They list public nuisance um, under the violations. Were these chronic nuisance cases or does that, do these predate that? This chronic nuisance didn't start till 2011 or 2012, so definitely yeah. predates that. Um, and at the time, there, there, there was structures, there was houses there. It, yeah. They've long since been demoed. Okay, so it, when the cases happened, there were structures on yes, the Yes, sir. Lots. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and again, this street was completely vacant. And, and, and this is a your, new owner anyway? Yes, sir. Okay. I, 
I do have some photos of the homes too, if that helps, or if you're interested. Yeah, sure. If you can show Mr. Posner, then I'll take a look. Yes. One of them, is this on the lot in question now? Is that, no, or is it? Okay. And you said you're in permitting right now? All right, we can make uh, these part of the record for this hearing. All right, anything else from the city? No, sir. All right, so agenda item number one, the city's taking care of on its own, and that lien will be released. That's the 277500 so that one um, the city is releasing on its own without any need for an order from me. Um, and again, the, these homes are going to, to families, you know, with a, an, an income that's restricted and, and stuff like that. All right, on the case ending in um, 045, which is agenda item number seven, that lien is in the amount of $9,400. I'm gonna agree to reduce that to um, $1,000. And then the case ending in 927, the lien on that property is $4,200. I'll re reduce that to $500 for a total of $1,500. Uh, can you pay that in 30 days? Yep. Pay in 30 so. days. Thank you. On both. Okay. Thank you very much. And did we get anybody uh, back for agenda item number five? No, it, look, it looks like nobody's here. All right. So we'll, you're going to re-notice that one for a future agenda? Uh, we'll have to. We pulled it last time, too, for a similar reason. Okay. And then is there anything else uh, that we have to do this morning? That is it, sir. This afternoon, then it's uh, about 1214, and we stand adjourned.